getting a late start to filming today. I've already been here just this morning. I took Dad back to Stockton, and then I come back because I had some things I wanted to take care of. I wanted to do some cleanup and move the equipment to the other side of the creek because that's where the rest of the timbers have to cut. Dad don't like sitting around while I do that stuff, so we're only about 35 minutes from Stockton, so it was just as easy to drive him back up there. That way he can, I don't know, go home and do what Dad does when he goes home, whatever that may be. We got a pretty good pile of logs out. We got them bucked up and sorted. The wind, you know, it was blowing hard yesterday, and it's it's kind of picked up again this morning. I think it's out of the west or southwest today. Uh, it really didn't play too much of a factor in what we did today. We didn't really get that many trees cut because the trees we cut this morning were kind of problematic trees. And later in this video, I'll show you what I mean when I go and clean up the treetops. So let me hook the fence back up. And we'll go see if uh, we can clean some tops up and move some equipment. So this is the one of the walnut piles right here. These are some, no, there's nothing real big in here. Uh, well, I say that down at the end, we got a couple big trees. But most of them are just slick, clean little logs. A lot of, a lot of rotary logs, a lot of number one and number two lumber logs, but there's some good rotary logs in here. Just slick little logs. I, I really enjoy cutting trees like this. The, the only downside to trees like this is there's not a lot of footage. You know, there's, there's not, there, there's, I'll put it this way, there's a lot of pieces here, but there really wasn't that many trees because the trees were so tall. So it, it really is, it's a good set of logs. Especially for probably, like I said, the third, the third cutting, what's been in here. That's a good little bunch of logs. So here's this beast here. <clears throat> this was the big tree. This is one of the ones we had to cut this morning. And I've actually got another log I'm going to pack out of here later with a skid steer when I go to clean up. But... We probably had to cut six or seven feet off this log, and we knew we were going to have to because the bottom of it was it was just bad. I, I can show you here in a bit if I can remember to do it, but the tree should have been cut years ago. And like I was talking to Dad about it, and he thought that you know the trees were been bad like that for 50 years and it just kept growing that way. So there wasn't a whole lot that could have been done. It's just. Uh, I'd even cut a little little bat up top there in the crotch. But it's got a lot of lumber in it. We got a couple of logs out of the limbs here as well. But that's just the way it goes sometimes. It's what happens, what happens when you uh, let the trees go too long. So let's jump the skid steer. We're going to head way off down over the hill. And we're going to do some cleanup. And then we're going to leave the skid steer all the way over on the other side there. Way over there. Then I'm going to walk back, and I'm going to grab the skidder because it's sitting right there. Then we're going to take it over there. And I'm going to walk back again, and I'm going to get my truck. Like I said, I, I get bored, and I don't like sitting around. I, I could have went and played pitch, which I love playing pitch. But I, I, I want to get this job wrapped up because we need to get on to the next ones. And I'd really like to finish it up tomorrow. Finish cutting tomorrow, and I'll probably have to do a little cleanup yet Friday, which that ain't no big deal, but... I wanted to try to keep up on the cleanup as we went and get the machines moved. That way in the morning we're ready to go. We ain't got to worry about moving machines, taking that time to get machines moved over there. So, here we go. Alright, now this is the big tree that cut that. Like I said, we probably cut seven foot off of it before it cleared up. And you can see that's what it looked like on the bottom. And we could see from the bottom it was bad. That's a big stump. And at one time, it looks like they've had some cable or something tied around it because the water gap's right there. Uh, and you guys know what a water gap is. I mean, I'm sure most of you farmers do. But some people don't know what a water gap is. Like here in cattle country, like a creek right there, this creek probably gets on a tear a lot of times. And there's no way to keep a good fence through it because it's just going to wash it out whenever debris and stuff comes down through there. So they build what they call a water gap. It lets the water flow through freely, but at the same time, I mean, water gaps come in all shapes and sizes and forms and just wherever someone's imagination runs. And this one's got a lot of heavy cable tied to trees at an angle there. 
So what? I mean, I've I've got the treetop out of there because we're we're trying to get the treetops away from it so they can burn them. That way, they don't have to worry about high water taking out their water gap or their fences along through here. Because I'm sure this fence gets taken out too, and that fence right there is more or less part of the water gap this far back in here. But yeah, like I said, you can see where this tree had a lot of footage in it. And here's what it cut off. We we tried cutting, I don't know, four foot or so off for the first time, and we might have cut more like ten feet off this thing after looking at it. But that's what it looked like after we cut the first four off. So, I mean, it, it was a bad, it was a big tree, but it, the top of it was good. But we had to, it wasn't going to get no better. And it was here by the fence. You know, it, it could have caused problems in the future at the rate, way it was going with its health. It could have tore up the fence or, you know, just been a total loss at all. So we might as well salvage something while we can because it should have been cut years ago. So we're going to go ahead and pick up these chunks here and put them over here on the burn pile. And I've still got a log. I'm going to pack out that log right there. I cut that log out of, the, out of the top of it. So we'll pack it out. We're going to finish piling this top. we got another top or two to pile while we're down here. We're going to go ahead and throw the video up today. It's a pretty, pretty uneventful day. I'm going to take the skid steer on back over there across the creek. I just cut these two trees and got them out. They were the last ones over here on this side. So... I just wanted to, and actually I found those just kind of going back through and checking everything out. That one's a pretty good tree there, this this one right over here on this side. It's, it's got some size to it. But And how I found those, I was just kind of going back through and checking everything out and make sure I didn't miss anything. And sure enough, there was those two trees that were pretty close together. So it's, it's always good to go back and check to make sure because just like then, I, I thought I had everything, but I didn't. So I'm going to go down here and start the skitter. And I'm going to take it on over there across the creek. It's probably, by the time you wind around, it's probably close to three quarters of a mile over there. I'm going to park it over there. That way it's it's there and ready for tomorrow morning. Where we're ready to go, try to get this finished up. I just had a great talk with the landowner. She uh, she was on a tractor checking cattle and seeing me. We, we stopped and talked for a bit. She was extremely happy with the cleanup, extremely happy with how we kind of cleaned up the branch there along the creek. Cause, and that stuff, it's not my place, but it still bugs me seeing it because I I know what it takes to, to work a farm and work a piece of ground. So anytime I got a chance to help somebody out like that, I'm more than happy to do it. I, I don't need to be asked, but we, uh, we, we piled a lot of that brush up and just old dead logs and stuff that washed down the creek and the last time it flooded, we we went ahead and put them in our burn piles from the treetops and not only that i i pushed over and uprooted a lot of thorn locusts or honey locust trees kind of got them out of there got them on the burn piles too so like i said it she appreciates it it just it's something she doesn't have to worry about doing you know for for letting me cut her timber it's, it's the least i can do to to help her out so we're going to jump on the the 540 get it over there park it walk back over here and I'll probably go ahead and run the cat back over there as well. So we'll have both pieces of equipment over there on the other side ready to go for in the morning. So guys, that's it for today. Thanks a lot for following along. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. You should subscribe. I checked the analytics, guys. There's so many of you guys that don't subscribe. So be sure to subscribe. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Turner Logging LLC. You can see pictures from all of our daily, you know, activities and job sites. I mean, most of you already do anyway because you watch these videos, but do that. Check out Timber Tracker. Download the free app. Check out Timber Tracker on Instagram and Facebook. And you can also check out Logger Threads on Instagram and Facebook as well. Guys, have a good rest of your day. We're going to move some iron. See you tomorrow.